Subnetting is a networking technique to segment larger networks into smaller, more manageable subnetworks. There are two primary types of subnetting. We have FLSM, which is fixed length subnet masking, and VLSM, which is variable length subnet masking. When we use FLSM, each subnet we create will have a fixed amount of usable host IP addresses that we can use. With VLSM, each subnet we create within that larger network can be different sizes. The reason to do this is to have a more efficient IP address in space and it also makes it more manageable. Both of these techniques are dictated by changing the subnet mask. An example to use VLSM is you've created two subnetworks, one with 110 devices in and one with five devices in. We can then design each subnetwork to have a sensible amount of IP addresses relevant to the amount of hosts on those subnetworks, which will then conserve IP addresses. But if we use FLSM, that network with five host devices will have to have the same amount of available addresses as the subnetwork with 110 host devices on it. Let's go ahead and find out how VLSM works. Let's go through a few points that I've mentioned here. What is a network? A network is a group or a collection of devices connected to one another for the purpose of sharing information and accessing any resources. In our example, it's a local area network. What is a subnetwork? This is where you take a larger network and divide it up into smaller, manageable segments. What's a subnet mask? A subnet mask is a way for host devices to understand which part of the IP network they're allocated to, which part of the IP address belongs to the network portion, and which part of the address belongs to the host portion. In order for hosts to communicate on a subnet, they must all have the same network identifier. A subnet mask is made up of four octets. Each octet contains eight bits. A bit is a value of one or zero. A example here is the 255.255.255.0 subnet mask, usually seen on the class C IP addresses. 192.168.1.1, let's say for instance. The first three octets, 192.168.1, are the network portion of the address, as its subnet mask for the network portion is 255.255.255. Zero of the subnet mask is allocated to the host portion, so a host device on the 192.168.1 network can use a host address between 1 and 254, again in the example of a class C network. This is all done via binary logic. When you see a 255, 255, 255.0 subnet mask represented in binary, it would be what you see on screen here. Each octet binary value is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. To get the value of 255, we switch all the binary values on. And to have the value of zero, we switch all the binary values off to zero. We can make any number between zero and 255 if we switch the binary values on or off. The ones in the subnet mask are referred to as the network bits. So this would be a 24-bit subnet mask, or even represented as a slash 24. The zeros represent the host bits. When you subnet, you're adding bits to the network portion of the subnet mask, thus making the host portion smaller, and therefore reducing the usable amount of host IP addressing space. In the traditional sense of subnetting, this is referred to as FLSM where we provide each subnetwork with the same amount of host addresses within that network space. Let's take a quick look at FLSM and slice our network in half. Our network is a class C network, which is ranging from 192.168.1.0 through to 192.168.1.255 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and we want to cut this in half. I write out the subnet mask in binary form. And then to subnet network in half, we need to switch a host bit from the host portion of the subnet mask 
to be part of the network portion. So a 24-bit network portion now becomes 25 bits. As we're adding to the network portion, we take bits from the host portion, starting from the first bit. The first bit in the fourth octet is a value of 128 in binary, and that is now our subnet mask value. So the subnet mask is now 255, 255, 255.128. To work out how many subnetworks we have in the range, we take that bit or bits we switched in the host portion and use the power of two. Two to the power of one is two, so we're going to have two subnetworks. The host portion of the subnet mask is now left with seven host bits available, which we can use the power of two as well to work out how many addresses are available in that subnet. So two to the power of seven is 128. 128 addresses in that subnetwork. We then minus two to account for the network and broadcast address, and then we're left with 126 usable host IP addresses. So subnetwork one is 192.168.1.1 through to 126 for usable host addresses. The network address is 192.168.1.0. And the broadcast address is 192.168.1.127. Hang on, I said 128. Well, we have to remember that zero is a valid value in IP networking. So to get from zero to 127 is 128. Subnetwork two carries on from where subnetwork one ended. So 192.168.1.128 is the second subnetwork network address. 192.168.129 to 254 is the usable host IP range, and 192.168.1.255 is the broadcast address. Now, this is fine, but if you had two networks with 25 hosts per network, that's a bit of a waste of available addresses and resources. We might want to reduce the subnets and create a network with 32 or 64 IP addresses, including the network and broadcast addresses. But what if one network requires 25 hosts, and the other requires 110 hosts. FLSM will not work, and we'll be wasting addressing space. So we can use variable length subnet masking and create each subnet to accommodate a different amount of host devices. Let's set the scene. You've been employed to design a network at a company with just under 200 employees, split up into different departments. So we want to subnet them, and eventually VLAN them maybe. But we need to tailor the network to the amount of host devices. The network range is 192.168.1.0 through to 255, and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. The departments are management and sales reps, accounts, warehouse, and guest. Management and the sales reps have 100 devices. Accounts have 53 devices. Warehouse has 12 devices, and the guest has a scope for 28 devices. Let's chop this up into variable length subnet masks. Let's start with the management and sales reps network as it's the bigger network. 100 devices. We can't just create a network to accommodate exactly 100 devices. This is just down to how binary logic works. Subnetting is based on the powers of 2. Here's a chart referencing powers of 2 up to 2 to the power of 8. A good way to remember the powers of 2 for subnetting is write out your binary values. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And underneath, double the binary values. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. If we want to create a network to accommodate 100 devices, we'll take a look at the chart and find a number that will accommodate 100. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. Nope. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Nope. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Nope. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. We'll keep going. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. Nope. 2 to the power of 6 is 64, nearly. 2 to the power of 7 is 128, yes. 128 will happily accommodate 100 host devices. Now we need to determine the amount of host bits that will be switched to network bits. Writing out our subnet mask in binary with the binary values, we then put our powers of 2 chart underneath the fourth octet of those subnet masks. 2 to the power of 7 is 128. So we'll keep bits 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 on the host portion of the subnet mask. And these will be left as host bits, so 0. The first bit of the fourth octet, we switch 
to be in the network portion of the subnet mask. So we're going to change 0 to 1. That bit we've switched is now a binary value of 128. You may recall this from our previous example. Our subnet mask is now 255, 255, 255.128. This allows for 128 IP addresses in this subnet. We still need to subtract 2 to allow for the network address and the broadcast address. So the network address is 192.168.1.0. The broadcast address is 192.168.1.127. The first usable address is 192.168.1.1 and the last usable address is 192.168.1.126. Remember that 192.168.1.0, so the zero counts as the value. So if you count 128 from zero, you get to 127. And that's subnet one done. We have 126 usable host addresses on this network. So I'll go to my router, go to LAN and create a subnetwork with these details. How you work out your static and DHCP ranges down to your requirements, but I'll just allow for 100 DHCP addresses. And that's subnet 1 done. Subnet 2, the next biggest, is accounts with 53 devices. So let's look at our powers of 2 chart. And 2 to the power of 6 will accommodate 64 IP addresses. We now need to carry this subnet on from the last contiguously. Broadcast address of our previous subnetwork is 192.168.1.127. So we can safely say that the network address of this subnet will be 192.168.1.128. Let's write out our subnet mask, so 255.255.255.0 in binary, and put our powers of two chart below. Two to the sixth power is 64, enough to accommodate 53 devices. In the fourth octet, this time we leave bits 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 and 8 as host bits, so binary values are 0. We switch the first two bits to be in the network portion. Our binary values for this subnet mask will now be what's on the screen now. We then add the two binary values together in the fourth octet and that gives us 192. Our subnet mask will now be 255, 255, 255.192 allowing for 64 IP addresses minus 2 from that to account for the network and broadcast address leaving us with 62 usable addresses so the network address will be 192.168.1.128 the broadcast address we had the total amount of addresses in this subnet so 64 starting at 128 so the broadcast address will be 192.168.1.191 the first usable host address will be 1.129 and the last usable address will be 1.190 so let's put this in the router now Let's now do the guest network. This network needs to accommodate up to 28 host devices. Let's refer to the powers of two chart. Two to the power of five is 32. You can stay at 32 IP addresses on this subnet or you could expand to accommodate it up to 64 addresses. But because it's a guest network, I'm gonna have a hard stop at 32. It's a 24 bit subnet mask at the moment. And on the last octet, I'll put my powers of two chart below and two to the fifth power is 32. So I'll leave bits 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 as host bits. The first three bits we switch to be network portions, so binary values of 1, and we add those binary values together and we get 224. So our subnet mask is now 255, 255, 255, 224. And that subnet will have 32 addresses available. And continuing from the last subnet where the broadcast address was 192.168.1.191, our network address will be 192.168.1.192. We add 32 to that, including the 192, and that will get us to 223. And that's our broadcast address. So network address is 1.192. The first usable address is 1.193. And the last usable address is 1.222. Let's go in the router and set that up.
Now finally, let's do the warehouse network. We need to accommodate for 12 host devices. Let's refer to our powers of two chart. Two to the power of four is 16. So 16 IP addresses in this subnet. That seems sensible to accommodate 12 devices and still have a little bit of headroom. So we can write out our subnet mask in binary based on 24 bits to start with. Put our powers of two chart underneath and we can see that bits five, six, seven, and eight can be left as the host portion in the fourth octet. Therefore, we need to switch bits one, two, three, and four to be in the network portion. Add the binary values together equals 240. So our subnet mask will be 255.255.255.240. The network address will be 1.224. Broadcast address is 16 addresses from 224, so it'd be 1.239. First usable address will be 1.225, and the last usable address will be 1.238. And we've left some headroom to make another network or expand should we need to. And that is variable length subnet masking, building subnets to accommodate varying numbers of host devices within a single network range. So I'm going to assign these subnetworks to ports on my router and just use untagged VLANs for now. If you want to know more about VLANs, do check out my dedicated video on VLANs. On port one, if I go to my max network settings, I can see the IP address and the subnet mask and the gateway IP address. I'll change to port two and do the same thing. We see the subnet mask is different and so is my gateway address and my IP address reflects the network address that I'm within. And then the same with port three, the same with port 4. I hope this video has been of some help and thank you for watching and if you did enjoy the content please subscribe to the channel.